Breaking news happening now. This is a Wave News Alert. We begin the hour with big breaking news in Louisville. A dramatic rescue unfolding today after a crash leaves a semi dangling over the edge of the 2nd Street Bridge with the driver trapped inside. This is Wave News at 3. I'm more jealous. We brought it to you live on air as it was happening this afternoon. A three vehicle crash started it all, but it was ultimately the semi truck dangling over the Ohio River that caught the attention of thousands in the Louisville area today and the high stakes rescue that followed as crews quickly scrambled to pull the driver out and back to safety. We'll be bringing you team coverage throughout the evening, but right now let's get to Wave News reporter Sean Bounty live near the bridge after talking to fire crews earlier today. Sean. Yeah, Ward, we heard from uh, Fire Chief Brian O'Neill who talked about this as uh, calling it a once in a career type of rescue event. And although it's something that they rarely ever see, if ever in a career, it is something that they say they're prepared for, something that they train for in situations exactly like this. So when they got the call around noon, they say they were prepared. In three minutes, they were on scene. And other than that semi, someone in the other car, that one of the other two cars that were involved was sent to the hospital. So crews had to split their attention between those three cars that were involved. As for the semi dangling off the edge of the woman in the driver's seat was communicating with fire crews the whole time uh, they were on scene as well. The whole time they were rappelling down to her in that video really is just incredible. 40 minutes later, she was out of the car talking to the person who brought her back to safety. That person was firefighter Bryce Carden, who told us his training took over and was just happy to get her out. Just she was thanking, you know, thank God. That's what she kept saying. Thank God. And I, I told her, I said, just take a deep breath. And then here's what I need you to do, because I need her to assist in, you know, moving certain ways to be able to get the harness on right. And once we did that, we got her free of the seatbelt and uh, she was on my system. So I knew that we were good from there. We Conditions of the people in the other cars involved in this case are still unknown. We'll give you a look at what it looks like right now. Uh, fire crews didn't discuss exactly how this is going to be taken care of, but we do know that the bridge is still closed and you can see why. The truck, the semi truck that is still dangling from the side, there's still a number of fire crews on scene, some LMPD and their river patrol in the water as well. Some of them we're going to have to keep an eye on uh, to make sure that that's taken care of. It could be today. They didn't even say how long it would take, but it's something that we're going to let you know. As soon as we have that information, we'll make sure to get that to you. Reporting live in downtown Louisville, Sean Bowdy, Wave News. All right, Sean, thank you. And now that the rescue is over, crews have to figure out how to get the semi back over the edge of the bridge. And and the bridge repaired. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is telling drivers Second Street Bridge is currently closed for emergency repairs, and it'll likely stay that way until at least tomorrow morning. Wave News reporter Mark Stevens will have much more on how long this closure could take place starting tonight at 5 and 6. And again, we'll be continuing to bring you team coverage all throughout the evening as we learn more about what led up to this dramatic rescue and crash and how long the bridge may be closed. You can stay up to date on the Wave app or on Wave 3. Com. Well, turning now to your weather forecast, meteorologist Brian Good joining me now. Definitely a dreary day out there for folks. Yeah, it doesn't help at all with the, uh, the cleanup efforts that's happening on the bridge, of course, with a steadier light rain. You can see also the bark. Obviously, the Ohio River is likely uh, closed there for areas of the Ohio River traffic all the way into the uh, city there. But uh, certainly a messy look on the lens of the camera. It is chilly out 43, the actual tip of trots out in Louisville, but it feels like 37 and that's not going to change for the rest of the afternoon and the night tonight. It's just going to be a chilly, wet scenario for us as we got the light rain starting to increase more and more across wave country. A little more of the darker greens showing up just west of Louisville across uh, Crawford County, Perry County drifting toward Orange into uh, Washington County and Harrison as well. This will all drift into Louisville. So yeah, this is going to add to more of the backups more than likely on traffic in the metro being a Friday as well. That doesn't help. Rain chances will stay up throughout the evening. In fact, the drizzle chance really just doesn't fade away at all even as we head into the overnight hours, even some fog around. We'll talk more about what that means for some of the weekend changes we've made to that outlook. I'll explain coming up in just a few more minutes, Ward. All right, Brian, thank you. An arrest has been made in a home invasion and shooting case from 2022. Police say Tracy Williams was arrested for the violent robbery back in December of 2022. According to an arrest warrant, the victim told police he left his home on West Main Street, and when he came back, Williams and multiple other suspects were inside bagging up things like tennis shoes. They then shot the man several times and left him there, but he was able to 
describe the car the suspects were driving and identified Williams through videos and photos. He's facing several charges, including burglary, assault, and fleeing or evading police. Today, a funeral service was held in Moscow for Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Navalny died in prison two weeks ago. He was Russian President Vladimir Putin's most outspoken critic. Today, thousands turned out to pay their respects. The funeral took place under heavy police watch at the Church of the Icon, and Navalny's family reportedly had a difficult time finding a church that would even host today's service. Navalny's mother was in attendance, however, his wife, Yulia Navalny, was not able to attend. Before his death, Navalny had been held in prison since January 2021 after his Foundation for Fighting Corruption was designated an extremist organization by the Russian government. Dozens of people in Gaza were killed while Palestinians waited for food trucks. Now there's differing accounts about what happened. NBC's Rob Sanchez reports from Tel Aviv with the latest. We're learning new details today about that bloody incident in Gaza City where Israeli forces allegedly opened fire on a crowd waiting for aid trucks. That's an allegation Israel denies. Here's what we know. Crowds of Palestinians gathered on a coastal road in Gaza City a little before 4 a.m. yesterday, hoping to get food and flour at an aid distribution point. An eyewitness tells NBC News Israeli forces opened fire before the trucks even arrived. You can see there is gunfire in some of those videos. Hospitals in Gaza City flooded with gunshot victims. Israel's military is telling a different story. They say many of the dead were killed in a stampede around those aid trucks. And they say only later Israeli forces opened fire at a specific group that threatened their forces. Now, I asked the Israeli military, do you have any drone video, any head cam footage to prove this claim that this group was threatening Israeli troops? They say they have nothing to release at this point. President Biden says he is concerned that these killings will only complicate efforts to get to a ceasefire deal, a deal that he says is no longer likely by Monday. We are expecting families of some of the hostages to gather here in Tel Aviv outside a U.S. embassy building, urging the administration to push for a deal. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Tel Aviv. Visits to the southern border with two presidential candidates carrying two very different messages with them. You'll hear the latest from Washington coming up next. Plus, over a million acres have burned after historic fires in Texas. What crews are doing to battle the flames? That's ahead at 3.30.